Hello, I am Gonzalo Basili, 38 years old, from Argentina, but I'm, re I'm living in the Caribbean between the Dominican Republic and Haiti. And I've been working for four years now in different aspects of international health and South South cooperations. I have a diploma in social sciences, uh, also in public health. I am a coordinator, coordinator, and the honorary president for Latin America of doctors around the world, physicians around the world. I also coordinate the working group of international health of CLACSO, the Latin American Council of Social Sciences, and also of the International Health Program, an associated researcher and part of agreements of the Caribbean Research Institutes and the University of Santo Domingo. And also I have assisted Venezuela University of um, Health Sciences and also, I have more commitments, for example, ALAME, the Latin American Network of Health Systems on Social Medicine. And during many years, I've coordinated the cooperation in health of UNASUR in Haiti. There was a technical secretariat of cooperation after the earthquake, and I was able to coordinate the programs of health primary assistance and cholera epidemics. For more than 10 years now, I am in the area of international health and the study especially related to systems and policies of health and epidemiology in cities, um, diseases transmitted by the mosquitoes, and this is the field I am involved in. The presentation through the request of the course, I will try to liaise the question, the humanitarian question, thinking in relation to international health. I will try to discuss again the concepts and see which are the tensions uh, regarding the definition of humanitarianism, humanitarian action, trying to see also the evolution and differences and the changes that we see today, and also try to list some crucial intentions that we're having here on monetary health, and also try to have some contributions in the area of South House cooperation and the South American Union of Nations and the process of ISAX. The government in health and some coordinates in that sense. In the first instance, as the presentation requires, the area of international health and humanitarian action cannot be thought outside the world system in which we live today. International relations, that is to say, if we have some authors and perspectives in Latin America especially, we have to take into consideration that geopolitics of power and also the geopolitics of knowledge are two central axes to understand a field like humanitarian action. Let me to say understanding the process, historical process in the area of international relations, geopolitical tension, what happened with globalization, what happened to the with the Cold War. That means to say 
the geopolitics of power allows us to understand what happened in the area of concepts and methodology with humanitarian reaction. And also the geopolitics of knowledge, uh, the knowledge of colon colonies, because the literature, scientific literature, and also the technical one that we receive and read, and we have in the ministries of health, but also in corporation organizations, civil society and so on, in many cases they have their logic, logics that are thought from a geopolitical place and from a place where the knowledge is produced. There is a lot to be done in Latin America and the Caribbean in this area so that humanitarian action uh, especially on disasters, may also have innovation, creation, and also contributions uh, methodol in methodology. Many players in the area of health and social medicine are doing that. So after this, to understand that humanitarian action related to international health has certain knowledge field, there are theories, there are thoughts related to international relations. In the second place, there is also a field of management. It's a methodological field. Everything that we call humanitarian action means the same, operates, thinks and has a methodology and knows how to do it. And finally, it is an area for action, humanitarian action, as is thought for action. Is, this is what we're going to do in this exercise of my presentation, to think what we do, to do what we think, how humanitarian action has to think in its concepts and methodology and knowledge to be able to develop actions, strategies that have to do with the knowledge field and methodological field. Latin America and the Caribbean, they have a long way in this in terms of the idea of sovereignty, South House cooperation, but our countries continue to have uh, dualities in the area of humanitarian actions because they receive cooperation from the center and the north, and sometimes in emergency and disasters. And on the other hand, many of our countries have undergone, according to different indicators, to be also donors and players within the international cooperation system. The UNASUR has a role in this sense. That means to say, we could say that to think the area of humanitarian cooperation, we cannot forget or leave aside the financial and the geopolitical dimensions Humanitarian cooperation have to do with the use of resources, and on the other hand, with the geopolitical tensions and different financial and market situations. The central players in humanitarian action and also the social cultural dimension, how it is thought and what are the viewpoints that exist in the area. There is the first quick contribution, the traditional thoughts in international cooperation, where you have a division between cooperation for development, that means to say cooperation north-south and the contribution of developed countries to the southern countries or peripheral countries, if you wish, where the cooperation for development was made through mechanisms to support underdeveloped 
countries or developing countries. And also there was a humanitarian help that have to do with responses in case of emergencies and disasters, medical conflicts and situations of emergency and the purpose was to save lives and give a quick response and have efficient manners to provide humanitarian help. Those logics from cooperation to development and humanitarian action, which were separated to date uh, in all the cooperation schools and humanitarian action, and many of international schools, obviously this is a kind of explanation that is very old. It is not used any longer, because in general, all the authors and have a new concept in the field, understanding that cooperation can be continuous according to the relationships between development and humanitarianism, development and emergencies and disasters, and the window of opportunities that many times emergencies and disasters and humanitarian crises Mm, are not sufficient for development strategies. This is what I wanted to mention in this regard. The best thing that I would say regarding the field definition or the concept is that humanitarian action in general, you will see a multiplicity of authors in the literature. There is not a precise definition or anonymous definition. In the area of health, we have the definition of the WHO, social medicines, uh, also, and in the humanitarian field, it is not different. The United Nations, they have a definition that I will show it to you, but that there is not total consensus in the literature authors uh, humanitarian organizations and international players that what happens is that there are several terms that are used indistinctly. You will see that I'm not going to use the uh, term humanitarian help. Instead, we will use action, humanitarian action. But you will see that humanitarian help, emergency help, humanitarian assistance are concepts that are being used as synonymous. I will try very quickly for some coordinate and basis on which to propose the differences uh, uh, while using one concept and not another one. As I said recently, the United Nations uh, regards humanitarian help as a field within the assistance to development. The United Nations proposes this, and it is defined as an assistance designed to save life, mitigate suffering, and protect and maintain human dignity, both in prevention situations and emergency situations. These definitions, there are different resolutions and mechanisms of the United Nations. Perhaps the theoretical basis comes from the humanitarian charter and also the UN charter, the rights of men, and there are several background historical basis, the creation of the Red Cross as the direct uh, humanitarian antecedents in 1864, when the Red Cross was reacted, and the adoption of international treaties on um, war conflicts. You, we recognize that the humanitarian international law in order to see that the military or the forces 
may receive uh, when they are mm, uh, with problems, they may be uh, assisted humanitarianly. And also in the literature, you will see, according to the dictionaries uh, in humanitarian action, the, the Solferinos battle was the an antecedent before the Red Cross. So uh, we have some thoughts on that battle in which a uh, intellectual proposes the society to have volunteers and as aid spaces to protect the people that are wounded and affected by this kind of mm, war battles humanitarian action and assistance obviously they have to do after the second world war after the second world war when we have the great operations in the area of humanitarianism but this uh, background antecedents are not the only ones on the other hand those who come from the f political field will see all the concepts of international solidarity. This kind of uh, brigades and solidarity fields between the 40s and 50s until the 80s, where many organizations of developed countries, central countries, used to have a solidarity logic with um, also the Third World Revolutionary Movement. That means to say they also use the humanitarian side with an idea of international solidarity. Humanitarianism, of course, from a political perspective. That means to see it was biased. It was not independent, autonomous, but the humanitarian thing was used in internationalism and solidarity, which are the basic principles of humanitarian action. The charter, humanity, partiality, independence, neutrality are the four pillars, central principles of humanitarian action or humanitarian help. This is the Red Cross model, we'd say. The principle of humanity, partiality, unbiased, and neutrality, and the fourth one. There are different projects. For example, from 2007, 1997, we had used an Esfera project, well, a sphere project uh, of a humanitarian charter and minimum regulations how accountability, how to work with donors and with other countries that receive help and so on. The, the criteria to be used in all these cases, humanitarian charters and so on. And then, um, we have the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, OCHA, which emer is coordinates the responses to emergencies and with different responsibilities in the field of uh, humanitarian cooperation. They are funded uh, um, is Earth and SERF, the Central Fund of Response to Emergency which is uh, managed by OCHA, and ERF also is another fund, exclusively for great humanitarian crises and emergencies, which are other players that we, players that we may have in Latin America and the Caribbean. Well, well we have, is, uh, in addition to the system, United Nations system, uh, UNICEF, WHO, um, uh, and so on. We have ECO, which is the general direction of humanitarian uh, help and European civil protection, cooperation, 
in the area of disasters, we have uh, Canada's International Humanitarian Assistance, and then we have the USAID Office for the Assistance in Disasters Abroad, JICA, which is the Japanese International Cooperation Agency, Red LAC, the Latin American Network of OCHA, with the basis in on headquarters in Panama, with uh, different prerogatives. All the mandates of these humanitarian players in the, the in the last summit in Istanbul in 2016, they will propose the agenda on how to prevent fr conflict, how to end conflict, the respect of minimum provisions or norms, basically how to work differently to put an end to certain names and the chronic humanitarian crisis and wonder if humanitarian assistance creates development or dependency. We have the key sectors on these lists of humanitarian response. In each sector, there are offices in charge of the agencies, United Nations agencies, WHO is the um, larger one, but we have other agencies, um, hostels, UNICEF in the area of nutrition, and so on. Let's go to the key terms on the concept. The concept of humanitarian action is used indistinctly but it doesn't have to do with the um, concept of relief, consisting basically in an assistance to uh, help somebody that's suffering a disaster or other uh, dangerous situations. It doesn't have the ethical or methodological principles that humanitarian action may have. The logic of humanitarian help also is different from humanitarian action because the concept of humanitarian help is the Western model includes basically humanitarian help in emergency with operation that may be prolonged in time for different reasons, but humanitarian help uses all a, a, a perspective a humanitarian assistance to save life related to philanthropy, solidarity, emergency help with a very vertical and immediate idea. Humanitarian help was born in that manner in the Red Cross at the international level, and it became more and more sophisticated and complex. After the Cold War and post-Cold War, humanitarian assistance or help is characterized by the immediate answer, a quick answer, and to put in the center uh, the saving lives and a very vertical logic in its intervention. Obviously, it refers to assistance, but in many cases also generates a series of questions and discussions on the term humanitarian help that it has been discussed, the distortion of the local markets and due to um, and the creation of dependency and the weakening of the capacity of national states and the standardized discussion on several problems, which is the difference with the humanitarian action. Humanitarian action is a broader concept, including not only the furnishing of goods and services for subsistence and to save life and protect the life of people, it also includes a second question which is very relevant 
which is the protection of victims and their fundamental rights, the defense of human rights, the uh, political incidents also, and the follow-up of the victims. This is a central topic because it also refers to the role of humanitarian organizations that have this role to do, but also to make visible, to neutralize, and to put on the table the crisis and the protection to victims and in relation to human rights in great humanitarian crisis. And finally, I think it's a central topic that humanitarian action as a um, concept and a thing can't, it doesn't decompose the um, social tissue of a society, of the development of a state, seeking in the crisis or from the crisis to create a liaison between emergency and development, as in the rehabilitation stages, reconstruction, and response to emergencies. We have windows of opportunities um, also in order to connect development and also to rediscuss development and the preparation for other emergencies. That means to say the new humanitarian action as a central purpose is guided to address emergencies and disasters, of course, and also different conflicts, social, political conflicts that may be characterized as needing humanitarian action. And then another question is that it incorporates in its logic and in the understanding or intends to incorporate, and this is an exercise being done internationally and regionally, is to incorporate the perspective of gender, what happens with the distribution of the roles um, patriarchal in emergency and disasters, the increment of violence, gender violence, in where women and girls many times are uh, victimized, the intercultural focus and social cultural focus that has to, that humanitarian action must have, and also to avoid insurance models. Humanitarian actions will um, have their actions in providing services and public goods, essentials in an emergency or disaster, in a humanitarian crisis, accommodation, and so on, to protect the populations vis-a-vis -vis the destruction of their uh, subsistence or being able to guarantee their subsistence in the short term with a strategy in the medium and long term to prepare rehabilitation of these populations because many times, if not humanitarian crisis, in the, in the vertical logic, we respond to the emergency and the state and society and the population or the community affected continue having their own problems, uh, structural problems, until we have a new emergency to be able to receive this kind of humanitarian cooperation. They protect human rights, working on the guarantee of the community, and also in the area of incidents, testimony, and denunciation, in the area of practices and strategies. Always thinking in this uh, central distinction between Mm, the humanitarian action and the traditional view of the Red Cross, for example, the new humanitarian action, uh, we have to uh, make a difference with the concept of humanitarian intervention that has to do with the crisis of the post-Cold uh, War crisis. You will see there are many authors and literatures that, uh, because since the 90s, the cases Bosnia, Somalia, Rwanda will 
appear where the states of the international community define a humanitarian assistance without the consent of the national state. And this logic of interventions goes hand in hand with legal intervention, juridical intervention. Uh, militarization of humanitarian action is also uh, mentioned. So this logic of uh, humanitarian intervention and the United Nations Council has the power to authorize some movements, even living outside the sovereignty. But humanitarian intervention has to do with a political mentality, because in general, these interventions from Bosnia, Kosovo, Rwanda, uh, and so on, but uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, and many other cases, we understand that there are also strategic objectives and political uh, purposes. And also the vertical logic is maintained um, with regard to the populations that are um, suffering uh, the uh, military forces and at the same time receiving humanitarian assistance, and also using the concept of global security. And I would say that in the case of Haiti, the case of Haiti, of the, um, where many of our Latin American countries have provided troops in those peace operations, although the mandate is now finishing, the intervention in Haiti was a humanitarian one because the United Nations Security Council defines Haiti as a question of global security, not a problem for Haiti or for the development of the country. And as it is a global problem, the United Nations have to intervene above the sovereignty and self-determination of the country using a military force intervening in a peace operation with all the discussions that we may have. So this is to um, uh, clear up these definitions. We may have to take into consideration that a humanitarian crisis, in general, the humanitarian action is crossed by sociocultural perspectives, viewpoints, and a humanitarian crisis may have uh, political and geopolitical dimensions, could be generated by war, civil conflicts, and ethnic complex, displays, massive displays of people, refugees, and it can also be generated by social, environmental, and disasters. Uh, social and environmental um, dimensions and disasters, and also sanitary epidemiological crisis, great uh, magnitude epidemics, for example, Ebola in Africa and cholera in Haiti, where more than 11,000 um, people dead, and also the forgotten crisis or the chronic crisis in Africa, in several areas, and Haiti, again, where we see crises that are chronic, Sahara, um, uh, the Palestinian question, and so on, which are the pre-requirements on the central points to characterize a humanitarian crisis as such. First, the national and local authorities cannot, uh, uh, the crisis is too much for them. And the state may require international humanitarian assistance. Secondly, there is another important question that always in that situation of humanitarian crisis, the cooperation must be coordinated and articulated with the national state. For example, Beyond a critical view in the case of Haiti and the stabilization mission and the peace operation and everything that is connected with that uh, to human rights, we must say that the 
Haitian state validated this humanitarian intervention. Humanitarian crisis, when it is important, cannot be determined by a political sector or a sector that is in conflict. That means to say, a sector in conflict with another cannot declare, declare humanitarian crisis. And all humanitarian crises and humanitarian action works on two key uh, classic principles. One of them is sovereignty, the self-determination of the peoples, and the other principle is non-intervention in the domestic affairs in other states. Uh, after the Cold War and in the area of globalization, and all these phenomena and international processes in the system, we may say, well, these two causes uh, are almost definitions and no more than that. But we may say the humanitarian crisis have to have the okay from the states because they do not imply the use of the force. On the contrary, and the fact of humanitarian assistance and the right to receive the assistance has to be strengthened. Humanitarian action and humanitarian crisis in health and in general I'll explain when missions, millions of people see their lives and their health threatened in different contexts. In the case of uh, health humanitarian creation, where the local and national systems are not capable to be able to provide a proper response to the crisis. For example, Ebola in the Philippines and the earthquake in Haiti. Which are the countries, the United Nations, OCHA, they define L3 of the humanitarian crisis in countries that are very uh, serious. Mm, in this moment, the system is offering responses to four L3, which are Iraq, I don't need to describe it, In addition, uh, also all the deaths and losses of life. South Sudan is another conflict with a series of crises. Syria, you all know the Syrian crisis and the and the migrations from Syria to Europe. And in addition to the impact that we have, more than five hundred thousand people dead and Yemen as the fourth crisis, which are the receiving countries that have more humanitarian cooperation, basically uh, sub-Saharan Africa. The list, you may find it in any humanitarian, you may have the Palestinian, Sudan, Iraq, Nigeria, Mauritania, Somalia, and all those countries, as you see, Colombia, also because of the armed conflict, because the area is still considered as a mm, um, cooperation area. And this definition of the humanitarian action, we have to take into consideration a new concept some cause on critical, crucial process to think humanitarian action. The first critical not is the question of militarization and interventionisms. Everything related to humanitarian crisis, and we have there the geopolitical factors, the geopolitics of war we may mention. What happens with humanitarian militarization? The European Union military uh, charter allowing the military to be humanitarian agents in addition to their uh, activities as military. I think that all the question of militarization, violent expansion, we have to think it over because it's based on the need to expand and, and create interest many times. 
in terms of raw materials, oil, and so on, but also there is an economy of militarization, an economy that goes around the militarization of war in uh, contracts, services, international companies, and we have a Latin American example, very important, as in the case of Haiti, where also in Latin America and the Caribbean, we have to ask ourselves with the discussion of the role of the armed force in case of emergencies, because many of our countries and the building of our national system for the response to emergencies, in many cases in our countries, we have provided a role to the Uh, military forces, and you know that this has to do because there is a great discussion regarding what is implied in the area of populational control, the concept of civil protection, which is not the old concept of civil defense, and so on. Who are the players of humanitarian help that we have in the markets? in order to correlate militarization. Who are the main players? Which are involved in military action? Who are the donors? And this is important also because discuss is going to discuss again the dependency of the agencies of the United Nations and the independence of humanitarian action as international plan and many others. For example, United States today is the main donor uh, in the area of humanitarian cooperation. More secondly, in the second place, we have the European Union, which are the 10 countries that receive humanitarian, because basically Palestinian, Syria, Iraq, Libya, Afghanistan, Ukraine, Shad, Each crisis, we may say, if we can discuss crisis by crisis, we may find some relationship between militarization and this humanitarian cooperation. A second topic, which I think it is important to discuss, is the topic that in general humanitarian action and the traditional humanitarian help continues to have a monocultural rationality, westernization of humanitarian help. We see that this action has a social cultural perspective that is used, which is a Western humanitarian model. And this is important to mention because if not, we wouldn't be able to understand which humanitarian teams that have nothing to do with the armed forces or the military forces or the forces in conflict. Many humanitarian teams have great uncertainties and also health uh, teams are seen by the populations as, as part of the problem and not as a part of the necessary responses to, uh, in a humanitarian crisis. For example, kidnapping of humanitarian workers and a summary execution, not only uh, ISIS, but other contexts and places. So necessarily, we have to put on the table and discuss the question of monocultural rationality. How is it, how to, do we live the tradition and how to understand that the understanding of the world is far more complex? And in this, we have to see how to propose a humanitarian action intercultural, perhaps the lack of uh, knowledge This is an essential condition to be able to dialogue and be able to cooperate horizontally and interculturality. Another topic is the international regime of humanitarian cooperation, which are the uh, roles, philanthropic capitalisms, the relationship between international health and humanitarian action, 
because tradition uh, we have in its history the logic of um, disease and colonialism and trade and all these aspects because the health in the colonies it was thought that could affect trade and in general this was started to build a logic in the humanitarian agencies and that means to see is a we they were very concerned about the diseases and the migrations of people and of diseases too but also it is necessary to rethink about this taking into consideration other dynamics and logics and guarantee of human rights in terms of the epidemiological or health crisis we could say in this case the humanitarian cooperation systems in the Ebola case for example in Nigeria and we may ask what happened in the 20 years before in the area of international cooperation when uh, these uh, systems didn't have any ability to respond in the case of a crisis, like Ebola, for example. We also have there all the globalization that have an impact in the agendas of humanitarian action. Society and disasters is another central topic it is important to mention and to wonder if we can continue to speak about disasters as natural disasters when nature clearly today um, social environmental had two intersections the climate change as a determinant and in second place urbanisms and epidemiology of cities where we find great crisis. It's a chaos. For example, in Latin America, we have to rethink this idea of development between the relations of nature and development. And in the case of cities, sustainability, this implies a series of impacts in this regard and the idea of the relationship between society and disasters is to leave the idea of disaster as a product of nature because we see then disaster as natural this is a problem for society and development because it's the lack of control of the nature which is aggressive and threatening and that model that model is uh, that the crisis is the product of nature, um, puts nature as a problem and the threats of nature. And in this regard, we are having a logic on how to analyze these uh, models that try to analyze the behavior of nature. And that is why we are still using the basic science, meteorology, physics, and so on. All the physical and natural views that are necessary for disaster management, but are not the only ones to be taken into consideration. In general, Latin America and the Caribbean, they are thinking on how to work on disasters within a social process, because disasters are produced by the society of how is it that the relation between society and development create risks and threats that when there is a climate impact have all these crises and emergencies and disasters? Because an emergency and, a, for example, a, a rainfall and a problem with the river in the nature wouldn't mean anything they mean something when the man is there and may perceive a threat from that situation. So we have to think again on all that and the integral management of, of disasters and risks and the studies 
uh, the relationship between society and disasters because risks are something dynamic and continued. It's a continuous process, dynamic process of risk because disasters uh, do not happen one uh, moment and then we need the response and so on. No. There is a continuous disaster that we have to work on to prevent and so on. And also in terms of the preparation of responses. And finally, the role of the NGOs. We have to know that there is a discussion in humanitarian action on the privatization of humanitarian cooperation and assistance because many international donors within the 80s started to uh, channel funds through international NGOs, the European and American ones, and central countries, in central countries. And also h how much of this became an instrument or a tool of foreign policy. For example, a um, concern of the medical doctors of the world, they are concerned about this. And uh, what about a logic of the um, competence of funds and to fill spaces as a market logic? So we have the cases of Africa, Haiti, where to a great extent we see the failure of this model. We may ask whether if after 20 years in Haiti, humanitarian cooperation and international cooperation, uh, except in the case of South South cooperation and other experiences, which were very interesting, uh, and to whom they render account, which were the impacts and if those logic of humanitarian cooperation don't create more dependencies, a vicious circle in terms of dependency, not as we refer to um, health sovereignty, which are the players important in our region. We continue to have many international NGOs Caritas, Mercy Corp, uh, uh, well, uh, doctors, and so on. But I think there is a need in Latin America to rediscuss and redemocratize the sector, complementing it and working in another manner with the states, not weakening the states or occupying the spaces of the states or trying to replace the states, but how to strengthen the ability of the states. And I think it is central that these four, five, or six topics that I mentioned of the crucial notes are central to open a debate in Latin America that is necessary to think in terms of how to um, stop being reproducers of uh, humanitarian international agendas and cooperation avenues and how to recreate regional innovation on emergency and uh, humanitarian action. I think that UNASUR and the uh, an innovation humanitarian action may pay, play a key role. Mm, because in many cases, the South South cooperation has a lot of the uh, modifi modifying ability the experience of Haiti, which is a experience to be studied particularly. And we may have then a strategy with innovation in humanitarian action working with the states, but with also with the social um, civil society but not the north center, the delegate, no. States with civil society that are strengthened and uh, working in synergy in order to uh, reinforce the ability of the states. Also in the area of technical cooperation and the strengthening of capacities. 
There is a central ability in Latin America and the Caribbean for this innovation in cooperation may have um, windows of opportunity in technical cooperation. And I think it is essential also in UNASUR councils and the ISAC's um, risk managing, management networks we have to think on preparation of response teams in the region in the case of emergency disasters. We hope not to have this crisis. Uh, and uh, for example, we have the Colombian crisis, the armed company, we hope we, it doesn't repeat. And in this case, I think it is central to think how emergency and disasters to have a proper teams of response that may be seen are very important fields and strategies, taking into consideration that in this, we believe that what comes from abroad, abroad sometimes has more ability or capacity than ourselves. Uh, this all has to help us to think in innovation. I also want to have the idea that many times in our country have the idea of the humanitarian donor that comes with uh, trucks and uh, comes to uh, a certain place in the third world that is excluded and there is uh, a, a person, a peasant, and we see that the person coming down from his truck and tells to this, uh, please leave the way free because I'm in a hurry. And in that place, the person that is working in the front, and they say, well, look, I will tell you how many sheep you have in this uh, road. And I will take one one of them, no sheep. So leave your sheep aside so I may pass. So now the person in the truck is a computer with a satellite and start making calculations, heat maps and so on with a satellite. And then when the worker said, look, you have now 894 sheep. That means to say, the, they say, well, I will take one of these. Please leave your sheep aside so I may continue my way. And when he's going to the truck, they say, well, really, I, if he's sympathetic, was taking your sheep is the only uh, means of life. Listen, if you tell me who I am, I will return to you this animal and you let me go. And the peasant, he says, well, you are a humanitarian donor. And he's surprised. And how do you know that? For three very simple reasons. First, because you came here, nobody called you. Because you were telling me things that I knew. And three, because instead of one sheep, you are taking my dog. This small tale that we use, we use it to discuss humanitarian action, and, and we have to understand how to work in health and how to refund with innovation, humanitarian action, able to work on the needs of the peoples, the needs of the state, that may provide good results in the quality of life and welfare of people. Thank you very much.